and welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for Orza Vampires here on this 4th of July special stream. Um, so what we have here is we have a lot of one and two mana vampires, as you can see here, backed up by Soren, Imperious Bloodlord, and a Johnny Adversary of Tyrants. Really like both of these cards. Really like how they get to put counters onto our aggressive on our creatures, on our low cost creatures, and make them uh, even bigger. Really like both of them. Soren, of course, is the new one from M20. It does a whole lot. This card is just awesome. You know, given our you know, basically all the abilities are awesome. You know, it has two plus one abilities. I think when I first read this this card, I actually thought the second plus one was a minus one. You know, like it was like minus one sacrifice a vampire and then deal three damage to any target and gain three. But no, it's got two plus one abilities. They're both very good. And of course the minus three is really good. The minus three that we're doing most of the time that we're going to be doing is going to be putting in Champion of Dusk into play. Uh, this is a, a card advantage engine that we got here in the deck trying to draw a good amount of cards um, with the champion here. Um, yeah, Dusk Le yeah, Dusk Legion Zell, it is two mana. Um, could be playing Dusk Legion Zell, but you know, Dusk Legion Zell is just a 1-1. One, one. But yeah, we could be playing that instead of Cruel Celebrant or Pitiless Pontiff. I just kind of want to try these things out. Like, Pitiless Pontiff, I feel like it's just an underrated card that, uh, especially, like, on its own is not, you know, just being the 2-2 two -two isn't, that valuable because it's so it's hard to kill people with, with a two two, but whenever we're playing Sorens and a Johnny's, I think these cards increase the value of Pitiless Pontiff because if you start growing this thing to be you know three four five, you know you start growing this thing to be pretty big. It's indestructible. They just have to start chump blocking it. They get it gains Death Touch also. They just can't block this thing uh, profitably at all. And so I I really like the Pitiless Pontiff. Um, you know what is it's a is it good enough? Like, is it going to be better than Dusk Legion Zealot? I'm not sure. We're going to kind of find out. Um, we also have the the Cruel Celebrant also in here. Uh, you know, it's just a pretty good, pretty decent card. Get those triggers whenever we have our creatures dying. The one two body with this card has has turned out to just not be very like the reason why this card doesn't see play is because the one two body is just too weak. But again, we have seven uh, things to make our creatures bigger here. Hey, what's up, Koala Bear? Uh, to, to help out the Cruel Celebrant there. Um, four mana Soren. Yeah, so four, four mana Soren can give our creatures lifelink, yes, but so does this three mana Soren. And I like I like a, a, this Ajani just a lot more than the four mana Soren. Um, so Johnny's very strong. That plus one ability putting counters on our creatures. Very good. Um, and uh, what was the other other question? Somebody's asking about uh, Sanctum Seeker earlier. And Sanctum Seeker, while it, you know, right away gets some triggers for being a four mana card, I don't think that card's that powerful. And I'd just rather have like the Champion of Dusk drawn cards and, and these things. Um, yeah, basically, I really like all three of these cards, and this is what I want the top end to be. And then we got a bunch of little things. Um, new Ajani. I think you new Ajani is basically just going to be more of a it'd be more of a thing against like mono red where it can help you gain a lot of life. But these are these are like the best big threats. There's not really any of the bigger threats that are better than these. So that's what we got there. Uh, we also have Gideons, though. Gideons are awesome against control, so we got those in the sideboard to br bring in there. Uh, love me some Baffling End against, like, the Wild Growth Walker decks or against other aggro decks. Possible I should have more Baffling Ends. I kind of split them with Conclave Tribunals, though, where Tribunals just kind of good against a lot of different things. It's just really versatile that we can have in here. I have Vona instead of Lyra. I was kind of debating which one to play, for the anti-red big big creature. Basically, Lyra is a lot better being a 5-5 against red, but the reason why I'm going to go with Vona is because we, we can put Vona into play against Soren. And then if we're playing against something like, you know, like Nexus or something like that where we could have, like, the Vona in that could, you know, destroy some Wilderness Reclamations or, or something like that, then maybe we get to put it into play early with Soren. Um, so I'm going to try the Vonas. But it is, you know, Vona dying to Lava Coil is... 
very meh. But we'll see. We'll see if it works out. Um, oh, somebody was also asking about Icon of Ancestry, and that's that's Icon of Ancestry is basically in the slot where a Johnny's at. You know, like a Johnny a lot more there. Um, I guess he could have Icon instead of the Pontiff and the Celebrants. Like these three cards could be um, icons, but we want to have a whole bunch of vampires because the more the more small creatures like this, the better Champion of Dusk is, the better these Planeswalkers are as well. Um, and yeah, I guess we could play on Claim Territory. I don't I don't think there's really much of a need to. The biggest problem with playing on Claim Territory is you know still trying to be able to cast a Johnny. It doesn't cast Legion's Landing, it doesn't cast a Johnny, and then it doesn't cast your sideboard cards. You know, when we have, like, Gideon in the sideboard to spark, like, we have, like, some stuff, Elder Spell, like, we have stuff that's going to be difficult to cast, and I just don't think you really need the Unclaimed Territory uh, to mess up all those kind of cards. All right. Um, that's our deck. Let's see how it works. Orzov Vampires. Excited to play Soren Imperious Bloodlord. How about you, Hawkeye? Looks like Hawkeye's excited too. Let me say hi to everybody. Hi. Can't even see. I can look over on this other monitor. All right, so the Sky Marcher Aspirant attacks for the most, attacks for two. These attack for one. We'll play the thing that attacks for two. Ooh, we need a white kitty. All right. I need to change Vanifar. Is there a Soren? Does Soren have an avatar? If not, I could go with the Johnny. No Soren. So, of course, we need to attack there to be able to flip the first fort. Ooh. Look how far you have come. Blood was my beginning. And it will be I bestow a mighty curse. That's some pretty big creatures. Yeah, Adversary Tyrants is just awesome. So what do we see from our opponent? They were green-red with a Branch Walker. Green-red Branch Walker. I feel like there's a... Like that was the butt end of a joke. Well, they're playing Branch Walker. They're playing Wild Growth Walker. So let's get these Baffling Ends in here. I kind of think that's all I want to do. Is just baffling end. Maybe tribunal also. Just give me back my lieutenant. I'll kind of just trim the the two drops that aren't like the best, the celebrants, the celebrants and the pontiff here for baffling ends and tribunal. Could take out a conquistador, even though it does look pretty vicious. Yeah, we'll play this other tribunal over a conquistador. All right, here we go.
What's Legion's end? Ugh, all top end. <laughs> Four top end cards. Um, so I do have Baffle again on turn two. And then by turn three, as, assuming we draw a land, we can like play Soren, minus, put in Champion, and just draw a card. Well, we'll try it. Oh yeah, yeah, Legion's End. Okay, I know, I know Legion's End. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. That card's pretty good. I don't think we really need that in the aggro deck, but no, I, I do like Legion's End quite a bit. It is very good against Wild Growth Walkers. Or Lieutenant. Hmm. That's not a great card for me to Baffling End. Still gonna do it, though. I was hoping it was Wild Growth Walker. So they could have, like, Spellbreaker here. I guess, you know, like, they're more Gruel aggro. The problem with them getting this extra 1-1 one, one is if, if we minus our Soren, put in Champion, our Soren goes down to 1 Loyalty. So then, yeah, they'll be able to kill Soren. Naturalize? What? But we have a backup Soren, so that's cool. Depart Innistrad immediately. Or you will join my crusade. Hey wizards. Oh yeah, it's Yes, it is. Yeah, the The tr traditional constructed queue is pretty good value. Alright, so we got our two creatures in, so next turn we'll play the Ajani and be able to continue ticking up. We're down to two cards. <laughs> this is a main deck. This is game two. We won game one. Closet. I guess I could close the closet door. What is this thing? A charging monstrosaur? How about like a relaxed monstrosaur getting some coffee and hanging out? A coffeeed monstrosaur. I don't know about this charging one. They killed the one drop, huh? Proud to fight by you. You can still fight. So we got the backup of Johnny. If they do something to kill this Johnny, we got the backup one. Oh, that is true. Coffee, coffee does have a lot of caffeine, so that probably is a charging monster sore there. Good call. Deliver us to victory. Kind of hoping they're gonna block with the Phoenix, and then I could just sacrifice something and kill the Phoenix. But we're just gonna be trying to race here, you know. Phoenix 
Because worrying about my attacking my planeswalkers, we got some pretty big creatures. Speaking of big creatures, Chandra Tribal was really cool. It was really awesome. It was a fun deck. Yeah. Yeah, definitely recommend checking that one out on the YouTube channel there. Hmm. games bore me. There's more work to do. That is the wrong creature to block. go <laughs> yeah yeah I saw how like that match you just see how strong a Johnny this a Johnny is definitely definitely a good card ooh y'all hearing that that thunder and lightning that lightning was pretty close it is possible that my power goes out here that would be Really unfortunate, but it is possible. Power could go out at any time. So if the stream suddenly shuts off, that's why. It's raining hard here on this Independence Day. We got the black and white kitty for our black white deck. No, I don't really have a backup generator. I mean, if the power goes out, it'll just like flicker out, but you know, it'll, like, you know, it'll shut off the computer for a second and everything. Really hope that doesn't happen. Yeah, sh sure do have a link to the playlist. Glad you're enjoying it. There's my Spotify link there. Come on. There you go. Come on. What is going on? Play my card. Is there like some reason why I can't play this? Okay, there we go. That was like some glitch or something there. So just like every aggro deck ever, beating Wild Growth Walker is tough to do. Oh no, they're playing Seeker Squire also. Oh man, they are going hard on the Explore. That's bad for me. Understand you are in need of support. I will lend you my strength. 
So I guess my plan here is to just ultimate a Johnny. I think that's my my course of action to try to win this game. It's not the best course of action, but I think that's what I got. Dang, they figured it out. Hmm. Do I just need to kill the wild growth walker? Smart attack there. You are capable of more than you assume. Do they have non-explorer cards in their deck? We get to trade Conquistador in four life for Wild Growth Walker. The reason why people didn't really play Explore, the Explore package pre-rotation was because of blue-white control and approach of the second sun. You know, you can just sit here, you know, dirtling around, gain a bunch of life, get all the value, but then approach of the second sun just kills you. And so, yeah, so, like, they really, really struggled against blue-white control, which is, like, the second most popular deck. Um, and, you know, then, like, the, the blue-black variants of that also... 
I want to pay four more life? I guess so. I mean, I'm definitely just killing Midnight Reaper. And then, yeah, then, then the red decks, you know, the red deck, which was the most popular deck, you know, they had just so many different three three damage burn spells that, that could uh, kill Wild Growth Walker. And then, yeah, Hazaret. Hazaret didn't really care if Wild Growth Walker grew a little bit. So playing champion means we draw four cards. Yeah, we'll just do that. But now their Midnight Reaper is gone. There's Soren. I'll get some lifelink in here. Yep. Yeah, I agree. They're playing they they gotta be playing a Citadel deck. Yep, agree there. You do not have to fight alone. Look how far you have come. I should have put a counter on this too, too. I bestow a mighty curse. Yeah, drawing four cards from Champion of Dusk certainly helps. Next turn, I think we get to make a lot, a lot bigger attack. All right. Oh yeah, I love yeah, I love Champion of Dusk. Yeah, I, all three of these cards are just really strong. Really like all three of these cards. All right, so they they exploring. Definitely get both of those. Um, Vona. Vona could be worth it. Nah. I think I'm just gonna sideboard just kind of like how we did last time. This thing does kill Wild Growth Walker pretty well. Like, doesn't let you attack. Doesn't let Wild Growth Walker attack in, at least. Death Touch there. Maybe I play that instead of Celebrants. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Yeah, this deck could certainly be playing Takali Honor Guard. I considered that um, for the Wild Growth Walker decks here. 
and you know, Wild Guard, or sorry, Takali Honor Guard works very well with um, with l the a Johnny that can bring it back, also. Yeah, I made this deck. Um, I guess we've already talked a lot about a Johnny, but I mean, actually, I explained both of those <laughs> earlier on, Lord. But basically, a Johnny is just an incredibly strong card. It's been that and Soren have been our two best cards here. Like, a Johnny's just awesome, and uh, I don't know, not not too much else to say about it. It's just very, very good. The adding count, like growing these creatures, is really important. Like putting all these counters on these creatures, like sizing them up, is is how the deck wins. So I can either attack in for six, or I can tr Conclave Tribunal this Path of Discovery. I'm honestly not really exactly sure which one I'm supposed to be doing. I'm just a little worried about them going like double wild growth walker this next turn. If I don't cast the Conclave Tribunal here, not sure exactly when I'm gonna, when I'm gonna cast it, because you know I'm definitely gonna be attacking this next turn. But if they just had they have like the two wild growth walker in hand that those like both get to explore and everything, that could be disastrous. So it doesn't I guess they so they did not, so it was it wouldn't have been disastrous, but well there's one. Because you remember the Wildgrowth Walkers would be exploring and triggering themselves there. I am arrived. Welcome to the family. That has that costs a white mana? It's rude. So, I mean, I can... They'll just have Branchwalker block Legion's Lieutenant. I could have the... Hold the Sky Marcher back and, you know, flip the Legion's Landing with the other things and be able to activate Sky Marcher, but... Branchwalker being a 3-2. They'll just have the 3-2 Branchwalker will just block the Jade Light... Or block the Lieutenant. Um... Dang. I was going to give the knight the death touch lifelink because it was going to gain a whole bunch of life because I, I was going to be able to activate it also. And then, yeah, I was going to play the other legions lieutenant there. This deck's sweet. Love me some Soren and some Ajani. I never changed off this Vanifar. But the Vanifar has been working out for us, though. <laughs> I 
Uh oh, red deck. Get that land. Oh, they didn't target themselves. All right, well, I like that. It means there's probably not a chain whirler here. Oh, it's of my end step. Uh, right. No, don't have any disfigures in here for this for this matchup. I have we have Vonas. We have Vonas in here. Uh, is like the main thing, and then just like baffling ends. You know, it's like some removal. Soren can give some lifelink also. When people start screaming, I know I'm on track. This is just gonna be bad for you. Picked a fight with an ancient vampire lord. Because Johnny's a lot better than four mana Soren in like every matchup besides this one with the lifelink. There's not really room for a Johnny and Soren at the four mana slot. And Johnny's a lot better. The counters are really valuable. All right, so we'll probably take out these Champion of Dusks. Let's see, definitely want the Baffling Ends, the Tribunals, the Vonas. And honestly, Duresses may not be so bad. Yeah, I could have I could have sacrificed one of my two knights to kill the Steamkin. Maybe I should have done that with like the tick up here. Maybe I should have done that. Yeah, we could have to spark for Frenzy and Chandra. The spark's really not so bad for those two cards, but we have tri Tribunal also. So if we take out Champion of Dusk, I don't know. Champion of Dusk being a four-four is pretty nice. I think Sky Marcher and a Danto Vanguard. Like we're not going to want to be paying for life to save a Danto Vanguard, but it does. Vanguard, of course, does work well with Soren, but so does everything else. 
So the Sky Marcher and the Legion's Landing are... Oh, no, the Aspirant also. So those are the things that died to Chain Whirler. That's kind of a lot of things. Let's try this. the bestest of hands, but we have the Soren Vona combo. Gideon com comes in against control. Like like Espa. If you ever see a deck list, you're kind of newer to, to standard. If you ever see any standard deck list with planeswalkers in the sideboard, those planeswalkers are for control. That's every sing that's like that's true of basically every single planeswalker and every single sideboard of every deck. There's I'm sure there's, you know, some exceptions somewhere, but like that's gonna be true almost all the time. <laughs> the MTGA cats, they tricking you to thinking Hawkeye's around. He is. This is. That's the MTGA cat's name, is Hawkeye. So yeah, Hawkeye's around. Don't have light up the stage, please. Ugh. To Balt. Well, if they play Tibalt, they're not killing Soren. Well, That's good news. To my symphony of pain. Ooh, not even minusing. No friend of mine fights alone. I bestow a mighty curse. I will lend you my strength. Out. Gonna basically make it impossible for them to kill this Vona. At least that's that's the goal. Gonna try to make it very, very hard. And yeah, I could have I could have paid seven life and killed I could have like a attacked, pay seven life, kill the Tibalt, and then you know deal you know deal them six, but decided against that. Decided again. Decide just to attack. Hmm. I'll hold up the activation here for night. Vicious, vicious conquistador is kind of whatever. Is born of struggle. So they have a burn spell. They can trade all of their creatures and their burn spell for the Vona. Okay. Which if they. If they would triple block there, then I would know that something's up if they triple block, and so then I would pay seven life and kill one thing. All right, well, we had a really good hand, and we were on the play. 
and our opponent was on a mold of six. So what I'm saying is this game's probably not going to be as easy as that game was. Ugh. I don't like having the two Ajani's, but I guess we're keeping. Six card hand could be pretty rough. I don't know, maybe I should have just mulliganed. Hey, uh, happy holiday, Caddy Wampus. Happy Fourth of July. <laughs> yep, got my Fourth of July party hat here. The reason, okay, the reason why our opponent didn't minus Tibalt to block, because that, that would have, like, really the reason what they're thinking. So that would have turned their Tibalt into being a, a, it would have had the Tibalt be three power, and Soren's plus ability is sacrifice a vampire, deal three damage to any target. So if I just played a really cheap vampire after they minus their Tibalt, I could just play, you know, like a one drop vampire, sack the one drop and kill the Tibalt. And so that's that was their thinking. That's why they did, didn't. Um. That's why they didn't minus the Tibble. Hey, Matute. I knew you needed my help. What's that smell? Oh, it's you burning. Mm. It's definitely hoping for the land there to tribunal the Chandra. I could have just not blocked, of course, and then just had the been able to tap the celebrant. But if I don't block, you know, we're taking the two damage there, and then, you know, I'm tapping the Celebrant, we're taking another two damage the next turn, and everything. I just went for the block instead. But that didn't work out with missing that land drop last turn. Easy to say that I shouldn't have blocked and tribunaled without, like, afterwards. Um. We still need you. It's not really a difference between a 1 2 and a 2 2. I don't actually gain a life from Celebrant now because of Tibble, but we could still make them lose a life. is here to help your pain. Farewell.
And this Tybalt is really, really annoying. I mean, I guess, I mean, obviously it's the Frenzy is the card that's just going to kill us. Because even, you know, if there's no Frenzy here, like if they just had Steam Kid instead of Frenzy, we'd have a chance, but Frenzy means we don't really have a chance. It is good to see you, my friend. See in yourself what I see in you. Good old frenzy. Always winning matches. All right, we're two and one though still. Ooh, lights just flickered. All right, let's try this out. Knight. I want to play a two-mana card so, you know, if we draw another land, we can maybe double spell. Um, I guess I'm just going to lead with a lieutenant. It's basic planes. Guessing this is a feather deck? Yep. Looking like a feather deck. Would have been really nice to draw third land. Would have been nice. Imagine playing two knights here, both of them being four fives, for example. A war leader? What is that thing? Okay. Now, how do we proceed? Do I want to go Soren minus put in Champion of Dusk? I think so. It's either that or play Celebrant in another night. Hmm. Maybe I should just play Celebrant in another night. Let's do that. Okay. All right, my Twitch page did just kind of. Okay, there we go. I see Oslins. Everything underneath my highs, I see now. It it uh, like spazzed out. I had to refresh. So if you said something above where I just put those high emotes in. I didn't see your message. All right, so Cranko. I mean, this kills 
that 4-4. Four, four. Let's get Vona's in here. Yeah, Vona's cool. Kind of cutting the same cards that I always do. The weakest of the cards. I built an elemental deck this morning, really enjoyed it. Almost decked yourself twice. <laughs> yeah, Risen Reef can do that. Yeah, Risen Reef can definitely deck... You can deck yourself with Risen Reef. If you're not careful. So no removal here. Now we have removal. Baffling item was a good draw. Get on out of here. Maybe I was supposed to be playing this the Sky Marcher here. To be able to be like activating Sky Marcher next turn. The Goblin Motivator? Okay, well I'm I'm glad I played Aspirin now. Otherwise they would have been able to just give the War Boss haste and attack in with it. Yeah, Mortify just kinda costs a lot at three mana, but it's it's not a bad card. It's a good card. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's nothing wrong with Blood was my beginning, and it will be your end. Do I want to trade my knight for both of their things? I guess I'd only trade it for one thing, wouldn't I? Mortify just kind of costs a lot at the three mana uh, for removal, but it's it's not a bad removal spell at all, though. There's nothing wrong with Mortify. Yeah, it is. It is good quality removal. So they're going to gain two life, go to nine... I guess gain three of War Boss. Puts a counter on one of those things. Okay, they're not attacking with War Boss, so they gain two, go to nine. Rule of Law is not good against anything. Um, I mean, obviously it's good against, like, Arclight Phoenix kind of thing, but no, it's not. It's not one of the best sideboard cards you can put in your deck, is what I'm saying. Oh, okay, you have to mentor first. All right, so they only gain the two life. Um, white Ley Line, yes, White Ley Line is, is pretty good against Mono Red, but, of course, Mono Red can also just burn out all your creatures and everything, even if you have White Ley Line. So I can block the 4-4 and keep Soren alive. They just have one blocker? Yes, yeah, so they're just dead. <laughs> Weak. Life 
blood is sweeter than blood. All right, we are three and one. Three and one. You're trying out scheming symmetry, and it was a dead card all all game because opponent had weight, white ley line. <laughs> That's pretty random. <laughs> White Ley Line is very good against Mono Red when you're not playing creatures, so they can't just use their burn spells on your creatures also. It's great there. Ugh. All right, well, this is the matchup that we lost before with Mono Red. Seriously? That wasn't good. We definitely have a lot more in our sideboard for this matchup than what we do currently. Maybe I should be playing all the duresses, though. Like, honestly, maybe I should just be playing all the duresses. Well, let's try it out. Let's try all these duresses. So I'm going to cut... I'm going to cut into Johnny. We're going to cut the Celebrants, the Pontiff, the Champions, and the Sky Marchers, and one Legion's Landing. Oh, gosh, these Adanto Vanguards. Those cards aren't any good. All right, let's get Pontiff Celebrant back in. Okay. Let's try this with a bunch of Duresses. And a Dispark. See if we can take, you know, Chandra, Tabalt, Frenzy, that kind of stuff. There's a lot of like life gain stuff that we could play in this matchup. You know, like we could we could fill our deck with like Oath of Kaya's Basilica Bell Haunts, um, you know, Lyra's stuff like that. We're just getting stuck on lands a lot here. Come on. Play my card. There, I mean, there's a ton of black-white cards that you can play to make your mono-red mono, -white, mono -red matchup better, which it looks like maybe I don't have enough in my sideboard for this matchup. But there's definitely a ton of cards that could play. I mean, this is this is a five card hand that's not very exciting. Has some of our worst cards in it. You know, like Celebrant, Conquistador. These are our worst cards in our 
And that's what we got. They didn't hit a land drop. Our kinship ensures our victory. You are capable of more than you assume. No, I can't minus the Ajani because the Viachino Pyromancer kills the Ajani if I minus. And the Ajani is like the only thing I have. So can't really do that. We're going to hopefully draw a creature that we get to play with landing and can still tick up here on two things. Okay, that's good. Deliver us to victory. That's good. I really don't want to put my Johnny down to two loyalty. Uh, that is not how a Johnny works. You cannot put two counters on one thing. New uh, Vivian works like that. You can put two counters on the on the same thing with Vivian. That is not how a Johnny works. Put a 1-1 counter on each of up to two target creatures. Very well. That was a perfect draw step. Look how far you've come. Perfect draw step. All we need is our opponent to get stuck on lands. Our Johnny just kept ticking up, couldn't die. All right, we're going to game number three. Here we go, game three. His hands aren't good. I mean, do we go to five? I'd be putting the Celebrant down to the bottom, of course. You know, getting rid of one of the black cards is the worst one. Ugh, we'd have to draw, you know, we have to draw Black Source. And then even if we draw Black Source, it's not like this hand spectacular anyway. Alright, down to five. Either putting the Isolated Chapel or the Legion Lieutenant back. Lieutenant. The 
the steamkin out of here. No chain whirler. Good, no chain whirler. So this is tough. Either they want me to block here and then they are gonna Wizards Lightning like whatever creature I don't block kind of thing. Or they're going for light at the stage, yeah. Definitely, yeah, definitely thought they had the removal spell in hand. I don't want to try to pump the pump the knight before they use that and everything. I I was definitely considering. Um, Watch your temper. Hmm. I was definitely considering sacrificing the the creature. And killing the Lava Runner, sacrificing the, the Legion's landing token and killing Lava Runner. If I would have done that, they would have just still just, it would have ended up being the same thing. They could have just shocked, then striked the the Soren. It wouldn't really changed, but it did force them to use that, you know, to force them to have all that kind of thing. Oh, if I pump, but then if they lightning strike my knight after I pump. That's kind of a disaster. If they had a strike, I don't, you know, they could have just st striked my knight. on their turn. I guess they wanted me to waste my mana. At least we got an extra card out of them. Blows 
Their hand has a lot of burn in it. Curse your bloodline. Wow. Their hand was loaded. There goes the Conquistador. Unfortunately, I think I have to save the Tribunal for a Frenzy, I think. It's a great draw. Just get the block in there also. And so many cheap burn spells. That was all their hand was. Really good hand. All right, looks like we're dead. No, that's not Thunderwonk. That's not how it works. Knight says, at the beginning of your end step, if a player lost four or more life this turn, you put a counter on it. I couldn't just not block and take four damage on, on my opponent's turn and then have the knight grow. Doesn't quite work like that. Right, it's got to be our turn. I cannot wow, you. they had the they had the burn spell. If they would have just killed the Thank celebrant in response, then that that trigger would have done nothing. Vona! Please no coil. Lyra would be a, so much better right now if we had Lyra. Okay, maybe would have been the same amount of better. They had fight with fire. Ugh. Now they're winning the race. Got a chomp. Blech. 
Close game, close game. Didn't go our way though. Man, their hand was loaded there. And so, you know, they, they only had two lands for a while once they started drawing some lands. Just all burn spells. All the burn spells. So yeah, this deck worked really well, except for, you know, we we lost both of our matches to Mono Red. Um, Vona was was good. Vona was a lot better, you know, after we could put some counters on it to let it grow. Um, I could I could certainly see having some more stuff against Mono Red in our sideboard. I did put in all those duresses. We didn't draw those. Though. I don't know what else we'd really put. I mean... I don't know what we'd really, like, kind of change, though. Just never really... You know, we never drew our duresses. Which would help. Um, I don't know. We have a lot of good stuff. They just had a ton of removal for our Knight of the Ebon Legions and everything. We could have Soot or Cry. I, I think I'd rather be on, like, Basilica Bell Haunt, to be honest. I think that's a card that I'd maybe ra rather have. Like, maybe instead of Vona's, we're supposed to be playing Bell Haunts or Lyra's. That whole make them discard and everything. I don't know. Like, Mono Red's just a really good deck. And, and you know, like, we could have, you know, could put in, like, another five cards in our sideboard for it, but... That does hurt our sideboard plans against everything else. And even though we lost both of those matches, you know, like they were close three game set matches both times, they could have gone our way, you know, like they were both kind of coin flips. Um, I don't, I really don't think that it's too necessary to make a huge change to the sideboard to help out that matchup, to be honest. I think we're probably an underdog overall, but at the risk of hurting a lot of other matchups by changing a whole lot of stuff. We didn't get to play against Esper at all. I think we'd want to play some games against Esper to see if we need the Gideons against Esper. If we don't need, if it turns out we don't need Gideons against Esper, then the Gideons can be anti-red stuff. But could play, could just have a couple Kaya's Wraths in the sideboard. I don't know if, you know, just for like green creature matchups and everything, we could. I don't think that's really where we want to be, though. I don't think that's what this deck is wanting to do. Um, possible instead of Pitiless Pontiff and Cruel Celebrants, maybe that's where we have some removal in the main deck, like some Mortify. Or oh, the Kaya stuff like that. These cards were okay though. They weren't they weren't real bad. But you know we could have, you know even cast down, could have like a couple of removal spells in instead of like these three cards. Um, that's that's another option there. Um, no no don't pl don't play revenge. That that's not good. Um, Wanderer is okay. Wanderer is a much much better against like gruel it's better against rekindling phoenix decks um than it is against mono red you know we'll keep trying the, the deck out some more but i think i think that's where we may want some like we may want some removal a little bit of interaction um the the weakest cards in the deck are the sky marcher the conquistador the pontiff and the celebrant of course basically the things that are not fours and threes of I guess there's three Sky Marchers, but um, those are like the the weak points of the deck. The one of the problems with Mono Red is like Vanguard is just Vanguard's like you know it's it's a really strong card in our deck. Um, it's a it's a really good part of our deck, and it's just very very not good against Mono Red. No, our deck doesn't need more card draw. No. 
Uh, no, I do not want to remove Dusk Champion of Dusk for. Or you're saying remove Duskborns? Remove the, the Duskborns for Luxodons? You don't want to remove one drops for Luxodon. Luxodon makes one drops very good. Like when you're playing Luxodon, you want to play a lot more one drops. We could play Luxodon <clears throat> over like Celebrants and Pontiffs. Like these could be, these could be Luxodons. Like we could play like two Luxodons over some of those. You don't want to take out one drops for for Luxodon. Um. But the thing is, is as we saw, there are a lot of games we had like two lands and a lot of games, and I, I don't really want to add in a whole bunch of more top end stuff. Honestly, I really like Soren, a Johnny Champion. Luxodon, though, is of course is a great card. I could definitely see playing like two Luxodons. Yeah, I, I could see doing that. It's a very good card. All right, that's where we saw vampires though. Um, if you're watching this video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. Uh, but thank you so much for watching Orza Vampires, and I will see you for the next video.